Hello Aries, welcome to the Plaid Sheep Oracle. This is a reading for kind of our entry into 2023. I don't think that it's really possible to have a reading that's, you know, all about an entire year ahead. That's, you know, it's too much space, things change and shift as we make decisions and move through our lives. But this will give us a flavor of what is coming in the beginning of the year for us as we emerge from this period of stillness that we've been in. So the deck that wanted to show up for the uh, kind of overall energy of the reading was the uh, Wisdom of Avalon Oracle by Colette Baron reed And the card that comes up is the Swan. And it's interesting, it's not, you know, a very Aries energy, right? You know, one doesn't think of it that way, although Swans are fierce. Um, if you have ever been on the receiving end of um, a protective swan, you will know what I mean. They sort of come sweeping across the water, their wings, right, like this fanning, you know, in a horizontal, or I guess perhaps a, right, a perpendicular way. It's like they are propelled through the water at you. It's very impressive. So there is an Aries kind of nature in the protective, fierce swan. It's also a slight, a mild synchronicity. The card is number 12, and I'm recording this on December 12th, the 12th of the 12th. So there is that. Now, the subtitle of this card is Transformation, Trusting the Psychic Gifts. And I think that is going to be a, right, a big thing for Aries. And I include myself in this, absolutely. I think that for Aries, if you have a sort of Aries intuition, which can be more kind of claircognizant, right, where you just know, you just know, that can be difficult to trust. Because the thought is just there. The information is just there. There doesn't appear to be a source. You know, it's not like you saw something or you heard something or you felt something in the pit of your stomach or, um, right, these other clairs. It's just there. And so the, it's very easy to second guess yourself and say, well, you know, I just made that up or... Um, you know, I don't know where that came from, or, you know, is that really true? So I think it can be, you know, if this is how you receive intuitive information, and it is how I, it's my primary method. Um, I do, I have other things, I have clear audience, right, I receive things often through songs, um, through conversation, uh, either with people or with spirit. But I often just know things. And it can be, you know, sort of challenging to really, to really trust that and move forward on it. We begin here for you with this four of arrows, four of swords energy. And this is about the, the transformation from that figure on the ground to the butterfly. We've been in this stillness, and now it's time to go. And the, the four of bows, right, four of wands in this deck, a very celebratory card. 
right, is right under that. And under that, the eight of vessels of rebirth. And the page of stones, this links, right, the page of pentacles. Moving forward into a whole new learning. You know, we've had this stillness and the ability to practice some gifts, some, some uh, spiritual gifts, some perhaps physical gifts, or mental gifts, whatever you've been practicing. But we are all still novices, really. We're really in this page of pentacles, student energy, heading out right on our own, right? This young lynx leaving the protection of the family group, heading out into the forest on his own. And so we get the lovers, commitment, commitment. And sometimes that can be very difficult we hedge, we may hem and haw, but the, the energy will be there to help us out to make this commitment as we begin. The primary transit for Aries, I think, and certainly in the first part of 2023, is Jupiter. He will re-enter Aries before 2023 on the, the 20th of December of this year. And he will move through it sort of to, to almost mid-year before he steps into Taurus. And while he's there in mid-March, he's going to meet up with both Chiron and Vesta, the three of them, meet up on a single day. I mean, in the exact conjunction of Chiron and Jupiter, 14 degrees, 26 minutes, Vesta will be at 14 degrees, 21 minutes. So she is right there with them five arc minutes away. This is commitment. Vesta is dedication. Dedication to keeping your personal flame alight. And Jupiter, right, he's returning to Aries now after 12 years. So it's a whole new Jupiter cycle for Aries. And in some ways for everyone, um, we think of Aries as the first sign, although, you know, the zodiac is a wheel. So saying that something is first or last is a little sketchy. <laughs> but the Aries point, that zero point, the equinox point, is kind of a beginning. It's often, for many people, it's the natural ascendant, right? The ascendant of the world. So it is, it's a kind of a momentous moment to have Jupiter, the great expander, the great indigener, coming through Aries. And he is, I think I, the word that comes to mind is jubilant. I actually feel rather emotional now that I say that. A little, a little choked up, teary. A jubilance that perhaps we haven't felt in some time. Aries. And so he will meet, right, Chiron, the great healer, and Vesta, the goddess of devotion, the goddess of the flame. So 
So this is real, real supportive energy for us, for all of us, but particularly for Aries. And although anybody born kind of in the first week of April may feel this with particular intensity, it is going to reverberate through all of Aries, right? Jupiter is a giant stone thrown into the pond, rippling outward all the way to the edges easily. And, you know, he will make that meeting with those two and then he will move past them or past Chiron Vesta moves faster. I think she will leave first, but he will take that message expanding it all through Aries and beyond. So I think that we will find it much, much easier than perhaps we have to make a commitment to the changes that we'd like to make in our lives. And we get the stag next. He is right, the strength card here. He is very serious. The stag. He does demand an equal seriousness from us. And then the nine of bows, respect. And this nine of bows also implies vigilance, or perhaps not vigilance, but awareness. Awareness of those things that might trip us up. And initially there's this struggle card. So we may, right, struggle may be a habit. Right, struggling with things may be a habit. A habit of mind or, or of, you know, even in spirit, right? It can also be seen as a virtue, right, to struggle to prevail over something. So there can be that. I mean, normally Aries, right? We really don't have a whole lot of time, right? Aries doesn't have a lot of time for struggle, but um, Chiron has been in Aries for a little while now. And all of that healing, demand for healings may, right, may have intensified our sense of struggle. And of course, we all have, uh, you know, a whole zodiac chart. We may have other places where, where struggle appears. So this next card is release, the underlying. And again, there is this sense of movement, the sense of wings moving. And that continues here in this teamwork card. And I don't know if you've ever seen crows harass hawks um, to get them out of their territory, right? Nobody wants a hawk around, especially during nesting season, right? So, and they, right, they work together. In fact, crows are famous for working together. to achieve their ends. And for me, this hawk uh, symbolizes all of that mental stuff, that mental struggle that has a tendency to, you know, keep showing up over and over again. And the teamwork there is for you and everything that you've got, all the ways that you can support yourself. Um, it's your, right, your personal fellowship in the non-physical world. It's your own inner being. It's your, whatever spiritual practices you might have. It's physical practices, you know, going for a walk or dancing. Um, it's creative things that you can do, uh, projects, artwork, cooking, 
knitting, um, communing with nature, with plants, all of those um, practices and doings and beings that replenish us and sustain us. It's our ability to remind ourselves. Oh, right, it's that persistent thought that comes up. I don't have to believe it. I can see that it was there and I can move on, right? And this, of course, right, these are, these are persistent, perhaps self-critical or catastrophizing or fear-inducing thoughts. They are not, you know, intuitive knowing. They are not intuitive nudges, you know, that we should, you know, I don't know, go check the oil in the car. Or, um, you know, that we should turn here instead of somewhere else or not get on this train or, right? These are useful intuitive nudges, but they will never come with that feeling of anxiety or fear or depression or self-loathing uh, or any of that other stuff. And then there's this scavenge card. So this is another spread set of thoughts about um, you know, not enoughness, lack that we have to scavenge for what we need. And then here's the, you know, warning, <laughs> right? The sky is falling. The world is coming to an end kind of thoughts. And then the I am right, I'm in danger thoughts exposed. The, the fears of being seen, of being vulnerable. So these are the things that we are being asked to let go of. And spirit knows, right, that this is a process. That in fact, you know, these things may not disappear entirely. Right, your feelings about vulnerability and exposure that, you know, that may continue, right? Maybe triggered later, whenever you try something really new, or when maybe you're seen by a bigger group of people. Um, you know, maybe you started just singing in your local choir, and then you, you know, end up on some sort of national tour. And then, you know, maybe somebody notices you in particular, and you're asked to do a solo, right? There's all of these places where we step up to a new space where we may feel a little vulnerable and more exposed. So what we're really being asked is to release our grip on these things and to be dedicated to, you know, working through each of these things whenever it might show up essentially to not give in to the self-criticism and fear. So the, the next underlying is this chariot card here in the Surrealist deck. It's a new deck for me, I'm really enjoying it. Um, and an interesting thing here is that this person who, you know, sort of ostensibly uh, driving this chariot has a bird right in front of his face. <laughs> so there is a level of trust, right? And the, you know, the smoke is sort of also rising in front of his face. There is a level of trust, trust in yourself and in the all that is. And that is something else that has to be, right, a dedication to faith and trust. We get this nine of pentacles, 
and this nine particularly, right, this has a very emperor sort of feel to me, right? This, this profiled figure here, um, but also the empress with that flower. Uh, this really, um, right, this nine of pentacles is solid. And he's smiling, right? He's got this little smile on his face. I feel like he's very pleased. You know, here he is in his garden. He's got flowers. He's got, you know, a lovely blue sky with lovely clouds. And he's just feeling good in himself in this. So just cultivating, feeling good, letting yourself feel really good. And then there's the Seven of Wands, which for me today is really talking about skill, right? Because this looks, it looks a little bit, you know, like the way you might handle a, a flute or an instrument, right? With your fingers on different holes, right? There's an element of skillfulness that you have and right, that you need to remind yourself if you're ever feeling really, you know, kind of right, exposed, vulnerable, you have the skills. And then the fool, who for me is right, an Aries card. Right, because the fool steps out the way Aries does, right? Aries is always ready to go first. We're always ready to go first to do it. Whatever it is. And to remember that. To remember that with joy. Right? That's one of your gifts, Aries. That you're ready to go first. That, um, that you have curiosity and a sense of adventure you know, regardless of, of what it is that you're doing first or going into, right? That, that you have exuberance and courage. Courage is a gift of Aries. And here, right, destined for greatness. <laughs> but in a, right, in a gentle way. Right? We get to enter greatness gently. You know, not suddenly in front of a roaring crowd of millions, but gently. And greatness doesn't necessarily mean a crowd of millions. It may just be, you know, a handful of people who know. It may just be you, even. <laughs> Although I feel like there's this bird here. There's at least one other person who will know your greatness. But it may be more, right? There's this see me card that offers possibilities. My right? possibilities of change, of being seen by a greater number of people, of being in a public space, of travel. And then there's this crone card. Um, and the, the red dresses that various characters in these cards have been wearing have really been speaking to me about personal passion, about our heart desires. So being able to sit under the moon with your desire hold the biggest, most passionate desires you have without allowing it to overset you. To know that you have the courage, the skill set, the emotional balance and maturity 
And in this first part of the year, you have Jupiter's support. That expansive energy in combination with Chiron and Vesta. And then this beautiful procession card. Right, this is also feels very Aries to me, very sort of fool-like. Right, of just dancing into the surf with a lightness of being and heart. I really feel a correspondence here between these two cards. Right, colors, shapes, feathers, water, air. This beautiful lightness of being that comes from connection to your wider self, to your own soul, and connection to the all that is, and to nature, right? To the world, the physical world. The trusting of psychic gifts and allowing transformation to occur. The underlying for this deck is the Queen of Wands, Aries. You are yourself, always yourself. You have your gifts, your courage, your passion. No matter what may have attempted, what circumstances, may have attempted to dim this fire. It is there. In the goddess cards, Venus comes out on top in the underlying. So that Venus energy of passion and love and beauty and creation under her is Fortuna the Roman goddess of fortune and then the cards that came out first is this insect moth card and of course my transformation and psychic gifts and awareness, right? And firelight, right? Moving to the light and knowing, right? With your psychic gifts, which light is for you, right? That it's not just, right? Some light bulb, but the real fire that you want to move towards. And then snake, more transformation energy. Shedding old skin and making no attempt at any point to crawl back in or you know, do an autopsy on that old skin. And then we have the goddess Hell from Norse mythology. And the card says, Hell is the Norse queen of the underworld, a mother goddess in her underworld guise. She rules over a fiery womb of regeneration. Hell is an embodiment of the divine mystery, a challenge to look behind the mask of appearances to see things as they really are. Transformation. And seeing yourself as you really are and not, you know, through the light of anybody else's projections or your own uh, labels and boxing that you may have imposed on yourself. So 
All right, this, this deep transformative energy is in play, Aries. And it's probably uncomfortable. <laughs> I certainly have felt it as uncomfortable. Um, we've been having it, right? Both because Pluto uh, has been moving through Capricorn square to us since 2008. Uh, and Chiron has been moving through, I'm actually not sure when he entered Aries, but he's been moving through here for several years now. And he's going to be with us for several more before he's out, I think in 2026. He spends a long time in Aries. Um, if you were born in the early 70s, you've been or having uh, a Chiron return somewhere in here as he passes through. This is a, been a very challenging time that has been really calling um, strongly for transformation of anything that is old and stagnant any wounds that we keep picking open rather than allowing them to heal, any struggle that we've been addicted to, um, control issues that we may have, that's an Aries thing, right? Wanting to control everything, wanting to do everything yourself, not, not being able to delegate or to ask for help. Um, moving impulsively, right, in, in a in a reckless way rather than uh, intuitively. All of this is up for review and transformation as we shift, as Jupiter rolls through Aries. And it is important because Jupiter embiggens anything that he encounters. He is, you know, he was, the ancients thought of him as a benefic planet. And if you, right, he will increase good stuff, but he can also increase trouble. If that's where you decide to continue to put energy and focus. And I don't for a second want to imply that it may be easy. It's kind of a simple thing, but it isn't necessarily easy. So this is why you want to be able to use all of the resources at your disposal. I don't want to say distractions because distraction is not what this is about. If you are, right, if you're, if you find yourself in a state of anxiety, if you found yourself having catastrophizing thoughts, you're not Right? It's not that you're going to distract yourself with something. It's that you're going to move your focus to something generative. Rather than, right, focusing on, you know, the lack or the trouble or the struggle. Right? It's a, it's a focus that you want on something that gives you energy, gives you life. And I did, of course, ask for a little bit of advice, Aries. The Nine of Pentacles comes up again, and right under her is the High Priestess, and under her is the Star, and under her is the Queen of Swords. So interestingly, right, it's all here, very feminine energy. Um, but the, right, there's receptivity and focus on what we love, right? This Venus energy. There's the trusting of our intuition and a cultivation of our intuition. There's allowing the healing 
to happen. The healing energy to bathe us. To wash away what keeps us stuck. Right? To wash away the mud and crust that has coated us and kept us bound. And to move forward with clarity and discernment. And right to 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 find joy in the work, right? To use our skills and to do it joyfully, not out of struggle or out of you know some sense of obligation or debt. Right? And then here we have the emperor, classically or hermetically the card of Aries. Again, you showing up a second time. As yourself in your best way. And finally, the hanged man, which is right, probably the advice that everybody should get <laughs> that one should always be able to shift perspective. Nimbleness of mind. Nimbleness of perspective. The ability to see things differently, to see, um, and also to see other people's point of view. Right, that is emotional and mental maturity. Um, and as Alice was advised, the ability to believe six impossible things before breakfast. In medical astrology, Aries is considered the head. And although the brain generally falls to sort of to Gemini and, and or to Aquarius, I think there is, right, there is a heady brain aspect to Aries too, the fire in the mind. And that is, right, that is a nimble, it can be a very nimble quality if you let it. It's, right, it's shadow side is that you can, you know, become stuck, right? It's your way or the highway. Um, right, that's an Aries shadow, the, right, becoming a bully and forcing people into, into line. The, the twisted emperor. Um, but normally, right, Aries has a nimbleness of mind. The ability to see new, to see as a child sees. To see with wonder. So this is again a call to cultivating those highest, most beautiful characteristics of Aries. Courage, joy, exuberance, enthusiasm, nimbleness, speed, um, generosity even, I think. And the spark, right? The spark of the flame, the idea. These are all within us, Aries. And we can cultivate them. And this passage of Jupiter, Chiron and Vesta will absolutely provide a beautiful and supportive energy for us to do that. So I encourage you Aries, to really believe in yourself, to believe in the possibility of joy and betterment, to trust yourself, to trust your inner and psychic knowing, 
and to allow this transformation to occur and complete as we enter right here through the end of this year and into the beginning of next. And I think, right, that we would right, make us make ourselves ready for the next adventure that is coming. And we'll see, see how 2023 will unfold for all of us. I wish you all the very best, Aries. I wish you a merry holiday season, whatever you may celebrate. Um, I may see you again before the new year, possibly. These readings will take me right up to the 24th. And then I may take a little break for a few days. Uh, and if I don't see you, have a very happy new year. And I will, I will probably see you in the new year. So long, Aries. <laughs>